The Battle of Colwezi was an airborne operation by French and Belgian airborne forces that took place in May 1978 in Zaire during the Shaba II invasion of Zaire by the Front for the National Liberation of the Congo. It aimed at rescuing European and Zairean hostages held by FLNC rebels after they conquered the city of Colwezi. The operation succeeded with the liberation of the hostages and light military casualties. Chapter 1 Context Chapter 1 Section 1 Situation of Colwezi The city of Colwezi is situated in the Orich region of Shaba, in the southeast of Zaire. In 1978, the city held 100,000 inhabitants in a 40 square kilometers urban area, with city quarters, separated by hills. It is a strategic spot, as it lies on important roads and railroad lines that link Lubumbashi to Dillalo. There is an airport 6 kilometers from the center of the city. Chapter 1 Section 2 Hostage Taking by Rebels In March 1978, a meeting took place between Algerian and Angolan officials and militants of the FLNC. Zairean intelligence was made aware of a possible destabilization operation in the Shaba region, which had a high value because of its mines of precious materials like copper, cobalt, uranium and radium. For some months the Soviet Union had been purchasing all the cobalt available on the free market, but Western intelligence did not connect this to the upcoming crisis. The FLNC operation was to be headed by Nathaniel Mbumba, assisted by officers from the communist states of Cuba and the German Democratic Republic. In May 1978, an uprising took place in Katanga against President Mobutu Sisi Seko. On the 11th of May, a 3,000 to 4,000 man strong FLNC rebel group arrived. The FLNC was supported by foreign mercenaries. Departing from Angola, it had crossed neutral Zambia. Upon arriving, they took about 3,000 Europeans as hostages and carried out various executions, particularly after the intervention of Zairean paratroopers on 15 May. Between 90 and 280 Europeans were killed. From 15 May, hundreds of rebels started departing the city in stolen vehicles, leaving only 500 men led by Cubans, mostly were garrisoned in the quarter of Manica, and in the suburbs. President Mobutu requested foreign assistance from Belgium, France and the United States. Chapter 2 – Franco-Belgian Operation Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Preparation On 16 May at 045, the French 2E Regiment Atranger de Parachutiste, led by Colonel Philippe Erelin, was put on alert. A meeting took place in West Germany between Belgian and French officials to coordinate a common operation. The meeting was a failure, as the French wanted to deploy their forces to neutralize the rebels and secure the city, while the Belgians wanted to evacuate foreigners. Eventually the Belgian Paracommando Regiment was sent independently. Meanwhile, elements of the planned operation started to leak into the press, causing fears that surprise would be lost if swift action were not taken. On 17 May, soldiers of the 2E rep embarked in four DC-8s of the French airline Utah, and were flown from Solonzara in Corsica to Kinshasa. Heavy equipment followed in a Boeing 707, arriving on 18 at 23.15. Preparation took place at Kinshasa Military Airport notably instruction in using American parachutes that took place on the night of 18-19 May. A briefing also took place, given by Colonel Yves Gras, the French military attaché in Kinshasa. At 11 o'clock, the first wave took off in two French Transals and four Zairean C-130 Hercules. Meanwhile, the Belgian paracommandos were regrouping in Kamina. The first C-130 of the Belgian Air Force took off on the 18th of May at 13:15 from Melsbruck Air Base, bound for Kamina via Kinshasa. At the time, authorization for the crossing of French airspace had not yet been given, and it was obtained just as the third C-130 was taking off. 36 hours afterwards, the paracommando regiment was deployed in Zaire and ready for action. Chapter 2 Section 2 French Benite and Belgian Red Bean Operations 
On the 19th of May the two Europe were flown from Kinshasa to Kolwezi, 1,500 kilometers away. At 14.30, a 450-man first wave jumped from a 250 meters altitude into the old hippodrome of the city. The drop was performed under fire from light infantry weapons, and six men were wounded as they landed, while another was isolated from his unit, killed and mutilated in the street before even removing his parachute. A violent firefight ensued in the streets, while French snipers started picking out threatening rebels, killing ten of them at 300 meters with the FRF-1 sniper rifle. European hostages and those who had been able to hide started to come under the control and protection of the French. At 1500 hours, rebel armor attempted a counterattack with three captured Panha, AML armored cars, which legionnaires met with rocket and small arms fire. The Lee AML-60 was knocked out at a range of 50 meters by an Lurak F-1, a second AML discharged a single 90mm shell at its assailants before withdrawing. At 1800 hours, the city was under French control and mostly secured. During the night, rebels attempted to infiltrate but were stopped by an ambush prepared by the French Foreign Legion. On the night of 19 20th of May, further fighting occurred. On the 20th, at 6 30, another wave of 250 paratroopers was dropped east of the city taking rebel positions from behind and occupying this part of the city before noon. This group entered the P-2 quarter and discovered the massacres that had occurred there. On the 20th of May, the Paracommando Regiment landed on the airport and headed towards the city on foot. Elements of the French Foreign Legion opened fire and a few exchanges occurred before the units identified each other, the incident did not cause casualties. The Belgians then entered Colwezi and started evacuating Europeans towards the airport, leaving the securing of the city to the French. The first hostages were evacuated to Europe at noon. The day after the airport was retaken, President Mobutu arrived in person to boost troop morale and reassure the population, he seized the opportunity to parade several European corpses in Villa P2. This struck Western public opinion, and led to a widespread acceptance of the decision by the Elysee to launch the operation. Pierre Mbouya later reported that the Europeans of Villa P2 had in fact been executed by troops of Colonel Bozange because Mobutu wished to provoke an international intervention. Initially ordered to stay for 72 hours at most, the Belgians ended up staying over a month, along with Moroccan troops, supplying the population with food and maintaining order. On the afternoon of 20 May, Metorkut was taken by the two rep, forcing 200 rebels away. Sergeant Chef Daniel was killed during the fight. This swift operation provided the paratroops with the surprise element that they exploited, capturing the center of the city. Within two days, the entire city was under control, and 2,800 Europeans were secured and evacuated on 21 May. Chapter 2 Section 3 relief. The entire region soon came under control of French and Belgian paratroops, until they were relieved by an inter-African force led by 1,500 soldiers from Morocco and comprising Senegal, Togo, and Gabon. Other contributors to the force included Côte d'Ivoire who dispatched about 200 medics. Between the departure of the French and the arrival of the inter-African force, Colwezi was under control of Mobutu's force, who arrested and executed hundreds, labelled as rebels. The force was under the command of the Moroccan Colonel Major Kada Lubaris, and the Senegalese contingent was under the command of Colonel Osman Doy. The Senegalese force comprised a parachute battalion from Thyroy. Chapter 3 Outcome 2,200 Europeans and 3,000 Africans were evacuated, while 60 Europeans and about 100 Africans were massacred. The FLNC lost about 400 killed and 160 prisoners, while 1,500 light and heavy weapons were seized, notably 10 heavy machine guns, 38 light machine guns, 4 artillery pieces, 15 mortars and 21 rocket launchers. 
Two Panha armored cars of the Zairean security forces were also captured or destroyed. The French lost five killed and 25 wounded with the two rep, and six missing at the French military mission. One Belgian paratrooper was killed. The 311th Zairean paratrooper battalion lost 14 killed and 8 wounded. 700 African civilians and 170 Europeans were killed during the entire operation. The operation was an illustration of the efficiency and effectiveness of light infantry when used, with the element of surprise and with good intelligence and logistics. Mobutu's regime was strengthened and Franco Zairean military cooperation was increased. French industrial groups, notably Thomson CSF, CGE, and Pechini, made notable increases in market share in Zaire. Chapter 3 Section 1, Filmography La Légion Sauté sur Colwesi, by Raoul Coutard. Colwesi, La Part de la Légion, by Frédéric Bouquet, ECPAD, available from www.ecpad.fr.